What's happening, everybody? Justin, Bridgewater's Finest on YouTube, Blockbuster underscore guy on Twitter, fueled, as always, by the incredible folks at Nerd Tees. And we got a little bit of news to talk about when it comes to Nerd Tees, which I dropped a dime on on my NFL stream, but we will talk about it here as well when we talk about our good friends. And welcome to week number 18 of my weekly CFL football pick show for the 2022 CFL regular season and postseason. And you know what? It wasn't exactly the greatest. It wasn't a banner week around here in week 17. Only went four and eight in week 17, which is the kind of week that you just can't afford to have this late and this deep into the season. I was three and one straight up, which is great, but that means I only went a combined one and seven on the betting picks last week, one and three against the spread, and a complete whiff on the totals. Now 43 and 22 picking the game straight up, which is a pretty darn good number. It's two out of three ain't bad, you know, and still 60% against the spread at 39 and 26, but now full five games below 500 on the totals. We have begun the mission around here, and if you're a member of the uh, CFL group chat, you know what the mission is. I might talk about it a little more in depth, uh, maybe next week or moving forward a little bit, but we're, we're deep in the mission at this point in the season. We're 57.44%, 112 and 83 overall. That's picking all the games straight up, all the games against the spread, all the games over under. It's not bad by any means, but definitely have been on a little bit of a slide since the early part of the season. So uh, really, you know, we got four weeks left. We got four weeks left to turn this bad boy around and it starts now. Had a pretty darn excellent week in CFL Fantasy, one of the best weeks I have had all season long. 106.2 points last week, buoyed by my MVP BC Lions quarterback, Vernon Adams. 305 passing yards and two passing touchdowns for Vernon Adams in that game. He added 38 yards on three carries rushing. It was good for 24 points exactly in that game, so a very solid performance from him. 1,441.8 points on the season so far, which did actually move me up from 10th place into 8th place in the official Atlantic Schooners CFL Fantasy Football League. 8 out of 50 now. The leader has 1529.3. And what last week was, was me making a significant move on everybody that I'm paying attention to in this league. I now only trail first by 87 and a half points, which is a turnover. I gained more than 15 and a half points on the team in first place, which is awesome. I now lead 10th place by 22 and a half. That is a movement of a full 22 and a half because I was in 10th place last week. And I gained nearly 20 full points on the team that's in 20th. So I'm adding plenty of distance in there. I now lead 20th place by over 115 points. I'm not worried about it. We're heading down the stretch run here. I want to make that move up into the top five. I'm going to be moving conversation about my CFL fantasy football roster for week 18 to the end of the episode. I'll drop dime on my roster there. I'm trying to make these moves. I'm trying to get up into the top five. I got to start being a little more secretive, I think, about my fantasy team. But that is going to be at the end. And also, that team could get totally blown up if a particular uh, former all-star running back actually returns to play this week in the East Division. That could very well happen, and it could blow the whole thing up. But my fantasy roster will be at the end of the episode. In the meantime, here is your slate of games in week 18 in the CFL. The Calgary Stampeders are on the bye this week. Saskatchewan is in Hamilton taking on the Ticats. BC travels to Toronto to take on the Argos. Edmonton is in Winnipeg to take on the Blue Bombers. And Ottawa travels to Montreal to take on the Alouettes. We'll start with Saskia and Hamilton to open up the week. Saskatchewan now losers of four straight games, dropping their record to six and nine on the season. They're also here on the tail end of back-to-back -back road games. Last week, they dropped a 31-13 to decision in Winnipeg, reeling at the absolute wrong time this season. They gotta be feeling the heat, not only from a team behind them in their own division, although I think it's, you know, that's probably kind of out the window, but they gotta be feeling the heat on these East Division teams. There's not as much separation there as they thought they were going to have at this point. 
The Riders still sit in the crossover spot in the West Division as the number four seed. They have a four-point cushion on the Edmonton Elks as well as the Hamilton Ticats, but it is only a four-point cushion, and there are still plenty of games left to be played here. They have a six-point cushion on the Red Blacks. I don't think they have to worry about them too much, but four points, it can evaporate pretty quickly. And it was exactly like I said it was going to be from the game, from the video last week. They had no run game because their running backs have been injured. They had no run game. They couldn't beat Winnipeg at home because Cody Fajardo had to do everything himself. And he had a good game, but it wasn't anywhere close, obviously, winning that game or losing that game by multiple possessions. Now, Jamal Morrow has been limited in practice to begin the week. He could very well play this week. It's going to be, you know, it's tough sledding. It's going to be right up to a game time decision, I would imagine, but it's possible they may get Morrow back. The Hamilton Ticats will come into this game off of their bye, having dropped their record to 4-10 and with a loss two weeks ago. That was a loss 23-16 to in Montreal against the Alouettes. That really puts Hamilton in these must-win scenarios from here. They got four games left. They basically have to win out, I would say, to have any chance. They're the number three seed in the East Division right now. They're trailing the Owls by six points. They do only trail the Riders by four points and now have a two-point cushion on the Red Blacks. But it, it's not impossible. It's not impossible for these Ticats. It's just a very tall mountain, especially now after making the trade with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers that sent Alden Darby back to the Bombers in exchange for a rookie defensive end. It's not really the kind of trade you make if you're still trying to win this season. It feels like a trade for a team that's building for next year. That's not to say that they're not going to go out there and try, but it just doesn't strike me as a trade that a team that's still trying to win would make. Teams that are coming off of their bye weeks this season only have a 12-11 and 11 record straight up, so it's not overwhelming one way or the other. But two of those 12 wins do belong to the Hamilton Ticats, which includes a 48-31 to 31 win just a couple of weeks ago over Winnipeg, like a game that I definitely did not think that they were going to win. They came out and had one of their best games of the season, winning it by multiple possessions. I've been biting on the Tie Cats all year. What's one more? We're going to take the Hamilton Tie Cats at home to beat the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Riders just continuing to reel here down the stretch. And I'm going to grab Hamilton here. It's both of these teams have plenty to play for. Nothing is dead any in any direction, really, for any team. But you know, again, I've been, I've I've lost so much on the Tie Cats. Why not uh, Why not lose a little bit more? <laughs> no, I'm gonna I'm gonna bite on the Tie Cats here. We'll take Hamilton at home to beat the Riders. On the line, Hamilton is laying two points here as a home favorite. I like him to win. It's the smallest of prices to pay, basically. So let's go ahead and lay the two points on the Tie Cats. Total in the game set at 49. Uh, now the Ticats off of their bye weeks have scored 25 and 48 points. I think if the Riders get to 20, this game is going to go over. So we're going to take the over here, over 49 points in Hamilton, Saskatchewan. Let's go Ticats 30, Riders 21. Hamilton wins, Hamilton covers, and give me the over by the slightest of margins. Let's go to Toronto now where the BC Lions are in town. BC coming off of a 34-19 win against the Ottawa Red Blacks last week. A great bounce back performance from them on both sides of the ball. Vernon Adams, like I mentioned, goes up over 300 yards passing, two passing touchdowns, and the run game was dominant on both sides. James Butler and the BC run game basically did whatever they wanted, and they limited Devontae Williams on Ottawa's side to, I believe, under 60 yards rushing. The Lions have, of course, punched their ticket to the playoffs already. They're currently the number two seed in the West, having the inside track on the Stampeders. They trail the Bombers by six points, but, I mean, it's not completely out of the question now because BC does have a game in hand, I think, on the entire West Division, if memory serves me correctly. So they do have that game in hand. It's not totally out of the question, but they're definitely in the driver's seat to get that other home playoff game. Uh, every game remains important, obviously, down the stretch here for every team that's in a playoff conversation, but I think it would be tough for me to feel that the focus has not already begun to shift for the Lions straight to the Calgary Stampeders. They basically know that that's the team they're going to be playing 
in the West semifinal. The question remains whether the game will be in BC or the game will be in Calgary. And honestly, based on how those two teams have played on the road all year long, I'd almost rather be the road team. The Argos saw their record fall to 8-6 and six on the season with that 29-2 drubbing in Calgary against the Stampeders. They got run over. They turned the ball over four times, and the East Division, as a result, stays interesting. With a Toronto loss and a Montreal win, it's only separated by a single game now. It is two points. Toronto's obviously clinched a playoff spot. They've clinched a home playoff game, but they have not yet clinched the division and that first round by. The Alouettes only sit two points behind the Argos now in the context of the East Division. And look, Toronto's yo-yo season just continues. Two weeks ago, they were dominant, basically across the board. And this week, it's just on a roller coaster. Like McLeod Bethel-Thompson, completely ineffectual in the game this week. Uh, they had no receiver that had 55 receiving yards or more. They only did 3.4 yards per play on second down. Remember a few weeks ago when I talked about one of the keys to the Argos' success this year was winning on second down? They had been doing it consistently all year long up to that point. 3.4 yards per carry ain't likely to get it done most of the time on second down. So unless you're in those second and short situations, they clearly were not in the game last week and got run over as a result. So if I really was subscribing to the Argos yo-yo theory, by rule, they should win this game. But uh, the Argos are only 2-4 and four this season against the West Division. And both of those wins, if you'll remember, go back to weeks 6 and 7, both of those wins came against the COVID-riddled Saskatchewan Rough Riders after during and after Touchdown Atlantic. So, obviously, they had injuries going into Touchdown Atlantic. Toronto won that game. They go back to Saskatchewan. The bunch of the team gets COVID. Half the roster is out. Toronto beats them again. Those are Toronto's only wins against the West Division this season. I don't love their chances to change that this week, to be perfectly honest. I'm going to take the BC Lions in a very marginal upset, at least based on Vegas's lines. I'm going to take the Lions here in Toronto to get the win over the Argos. Keep the East Division super interesting here down the stretch. On the line, the Argos are favored by a single point here at home. The BC Lions, to me, are just the better football team, so I'm happy to take the point here because I like them to win outright. Total in the game set at 48 and a half points. These two teams head to head, even though like they're not in the same division, so they don't play each other constantly, but they're on a wild under streak here head to head. The last 21 meetings in Toronto, the last 21 games just being played in Toronto, 16 of them have stayed under the point total. The last 11 head to head overall, eight of them have stayed under the point total. I think I got a skew to the under on this one. Let's go under 48 and a half points in BC Toronto. Let's go Lions 23, Argos 20, BC wins, BC covers, and give me the under on the points. All right, folks, we're at the halfway point, And as always, we will take the opportunity to shout out our great friends and sponsors at Nerd Tees and Coffee Bean. Nerd Tees has made a fantastic business change and are now offering multiple, multiple unique and flavored blends of coffee available in their store and available on the website. You still go to nerdtees.ca. You can still use my promo code, which is BWFinest. You're going to be able to still save your 15% at checkout on anything that you order from the website. You're still going to be able to get your free shipping on any order over 100 bucks in Canada, which is an excellent value. And if you're one of my viewers in the U.S., thank you for supporting the CFL. You also get a great conversion rate on the U.S. dollar from nerdtees.ca. For any of their incredible tea or coffee blends, like what I'm drinking right now, which is blueberry tea, a Nova Scotian staple, you gotta love it. Nerdtees.ca, promo code is BWFINEST, save your 15%, get your free shipping, get your coffee and your tea, find yourself something to love, or find someone you love something to love. You can do it on nerdtees.ca. All right, let's enter the back half of the week here. The Edmonton Elks in Winnipeg to take on the Bombers. Edmonton dropping a 25-18 decision against the Montreal Alouettes last week. That game was in Edmonton. And I just have to ask a question. 
Uh, first of all, of course, like, you know, the Edmonton voodoo continues. Um, who in their right football mind calls a vanilla shotgun halfback draw on third and three in a three down league when you just had a second and two and lost a yard running the ball. Look, I'm not Vince Lombardi. I know you're surprised. But who makes that call? Go to my Twitter. I'm going to retweet it so it's at or near the top of my Twitter feed. I retweeted the play that I'm talking about, which is Edmonton is on Montreal's three-yard line, third and three. A touchdown ties the game, and look at this play call. As a matter of fact, look at the play call. Watch the fullback. Watch the fullback get out into the flat untouched like he ceased to exist. There's your tie game. But instead, you called a vanilla shotgun halfback draw on third and three. How? Uh, Edmonton, obviously, at 4-11, and 11 are on the outside looking into the playoff picture. They're not out of it. They only trail the Riders by four points, and they've got, what, f uh, three games left, so they're not out of it. But, I mean, I I'm, I'm so blown away by that play call. How anybody who is actually trying to win could make that play call. Almost leads me to believe that maybe they weren't. I mean, it wasn't just that. Taylor Cornelius struggled in that game. Less than 60%. I think he threw two picks. Kenny Lawler just had season-ending surgery. So this is very clearly a team that is focused on 2023. Winnipeg increased their record to 13-2 and on the season with a 31-13 win against Saskatchewan. The game was in Winnipeg. Obviously right back on track after the loss coming out of the bye, or going into the bye week. Uh, Zach Kalaros, four touchdown passes. The defense generating six turnovers in that football game. Just a massive performance. Winnipeg has now clinched a home playoff game, obviously. They have a six-point cushion on both the Lions and the Stampeders. One more win for Winnipeg, and that will wrap things up. Now, in terms of last year when they started resting players... What we saw was we saw them start resting players two games out. Like, uh, Kolaros didn't play in their second-to-last game. And the last game, I think he played, like, the first two or three series and then sat down for the rest of the game. So you should see a full complement of players this week. But after this week, that's when you're going to start seeing Winnipeg starting to rest some players in anticipation of the West Final. I'm sorry, were you waiting for my insightful breakdown of this game? Bombers by 30. I'm taking the Winnipeg Blue Bombers 51-21 to 21 over the Edmonton Elks. I have no faith in this Elks team right now because they're just, they got nothing left to play for. They're not going to. Like this, the miracle run from them anyway is not going to happen. Certainly not without their second best offensive weapon, we would say. Shout out to Kevin Brown. He's having himself a heck of a season, but it, it, it's not going to happen. So, I mean, Winnipeg's going to run them over. They got their full complement of players. Winnipeg is going to run them over. So, I'm going to go Winnipeg 51-21. to 21. That means I've got Winnipeg covering the minus 13.5 that they are currently favored by at home. Maybe I should hedge this, but I don't see any reason to. So, I'm going to lay the 13.5. I'm going to go over the 49.5 point total because I genuinely think Winnipeg beats this total on their own, much less whatever Edmonton happens to put out offensively. I think they score some garbage time points, but that's probably about it. So, yeah. 51 to 21 Winnipeg. I usually don't make giant sweeping predictions like that, but this is one I think you can take to the bank. Winnipeg blows out the Edmonton Elks. And the last game of the week sees us go to Montreal. The Ottawa Red Blacks in town. Now 3-11, and losers of three straight games. They're coming in this one on the tail end of back-to-back -back road games, losing 34-19 in BC last week. And honestly, for this Red Blacks team over the last couple of weeks, it's been a complete regression to the worst of, not just the worst of this year's Red Blacks, the worst of last year's Red Blacks, one of the worst football teams I've ever seen. 
And once again, since they've got four games left, they're not out of the playoff conversation, but they trail the Riders by six points and the Alouettes by a full eight. So they would need to win out and hope that Montreal loses every game for the rest of the run and hope the Saskatchewan loses every game for the rest of the run and maybe, maybe they could mathematically get there. But, I mean, obviously that's not going to happen. All but one of Ottawa's wins over their last two seasons are road wins. So they've won exactly one game at home over the last two years. So there's that because they are on the road. So at least that kind of bodes a little better for them. But the defense has allowed 79 points in the last two games, right? 45 a couple of weeks ago and then 34 last week. Fait accompli, folks. Now for the Montreal Alouettes, they come into this game with an even record of 7-7 seven and seven on the season, winners of three consecutive games. This Alouettes team is kind of on fire here. We kind of talked about it last week, that they feel like they're peaking at the right time. Now I think winners of five of their last six, if memory serves me correct. So they picked up that win 25-18 at Edmonton. Of course, they were the beneficiaries of voodoo, wizardry, and BS, which was that last play call by the Elks, but they definitely earned that win. It wasn't just because the Elks made a mistake. They definitely earned the win. Montreal's not clinched in a playoff spot yet, but they are currently the number two seed in the East and only trail the Argos by two points. They got a six-point cushion on the Ticats and an eight-point cushion on the Ottawa Red Blacks. Their offense is a bit of a question mark for me. I'll be perfectly honest. The last four games, they've generated just eight offensive touchdowns. So, Two offensive touchdowns a game, it can win if you're running an elite defense, but in general, you would probably want more than that. And yes, of course, they've been scoring points with their kicker, and yes, of course, they've been scoring points other ways, but you want to see those touchdown numbers be higher to really feel comfortable. What is not a question mark for me is the defense. The last three games, the Alouettes defense have not allowed 20 points to an opposing team. So the defense is riding high right now, playing their absolute best football of the season, and it's happening at the right time. This game, quite simply, I think you have a matchup of one team wants to win and can. The other team wants to win, but their defense probably isn't going to allow them to. Uh, fearless forecast, the Montreal Alouettes are going to win the East Division. I think that starts this week with a win over the Ottawa Red Blacks. Let's take Montreal in Montreal to get the win over Ottawa. On the line, Montreal is laying six and a half points here as a home favorite. I'm going to go ahead and lay those points. It's under a touchdown, and I don't trust the Red Blacks to keep this game that close at this point in the season. So we're going to lay the minus six and a half on the Alouettes. Total in the game set at 47 and a half points, and I can't trust the Red Blacks to keep this number under. So we're going to go ahead and take over 47 and a half points in Montreal, Ottawa. We're going to go Alouettes 34. Red Blacks, 23. Montreal wins. Montreal covers. Give me the over on the points. There you go, folks. Those are your picks for Week 18 in the CFL in 2022. We'll go over them here with you one more time. I've got the Hamilton Ticats in Hamilton beating Saskatchewan 30-21. to I'm laying the two points on Hamilton. Game goes over the 49-point total. I got the BC Lions in Toronto upsetting the Toronto Argos 23-20. Uh, take BC with the single point and stay under the point total of 48 and a half. I got the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in Winnipeg beating Edmonton 51 to 21. I'm laying the 13 and a half points on Winnipeg in a game that goes over 49 and a half. And I got the Montreal Alouettes in Montreal beating Ottawa 34 to 23, which means I'm laying six and a half points on Montreal in a game that goes over 47 and a half points. Thank you so much for watching the week 18 episode. My fantasy roster is coming up here at the end. And I'm also going to show you my first and second team CFL all-star ballots for 2022. I put them on Twitter a little bit earlier today, but I thought I'd put them in the video here as well. So fantasy team, first and second uh, team all-star ballots 
and the end of the show. Thank you so much for watching. That's it for me, Justin, Bridgewater's Finest on YouTube, Blockbuster underscore guy on Twitter, fueled as always by the incredible folks at Nerd Tees and Coffee Bean, and we will see you again for week 19, where there will just be three weeks left until the end of the CFL regular season.